Cancer, this is a big transformation for you. The first two cards I got coming out are death. Look how beautiful this card is. Absolutely stunning. This is you surrendering to the universe, to, to you allowing something to go out of your energy space, out of your energy field to transform. There was some old stagnant energy that you were hanging on to that was really not allowing you to move forward on your path. And you're allowing that to go. You're transforming that. So take that in any way it resonates in whatever aspect of your life, relationships. This could be a past relationship, a current relationship, a job you had a strong connection with, a friend, a child. The next card coming out is the Six of Cups. Something from the past is transforming because you're letting it go. This could be the energy around that connection or that situation that is transforming. It could be the person themselves or it could be you. And all three of those things are really all the same. When you let go, things are allowed to move. I'm thinking about quantum physics here, stay with me. <laughs> and when you observe matter, when you observe a situation, an energy field by trying to predict what's gonna happen, trying to unearth the mysteries, you change its form. You change it into something that is more stagnant. Something that you can wrap your mind around. But as soon as you stop observing that situation, that matter, it's allowed to be as it is without your interference. It's, if you're interested in this, it's, and what I'm thinking about is the double slit experiment in quantum physics. And it's like, allow you're allowing something to be a wave. You're allowing the energy to be a wave frequency and not a particle. <laughs> okay, so it's like you're allowing things to be as they are because you stopped observing it. You stopped observing your feelings around this and your mind's eye. You're letting it go. You're really doing the hard work of saying, no, I'm not going to give in to this energy. It hasn't taken me anywhere. And if you don't feel like this is happening right now, then this is coming up for you. Or this is at least where spirit wants to push you towards. Death of the Six of Cups of this stagnant energy that was really just taking up space in your mind as a photograph and an abstract one at that. It's almost like your snapshot of the past of your memories was like leaking out, falling out of this frame in your mind, wanting to be released, wanting to be taken out of that solid form, wanting to just dissipate into the atmosphere, into the ethers in order to transform. And for a while you didn't allow it because you were really trying to understand it and observe it, as we all do. Because, you know, when death shows up, there is something painful going on here. But now you're allowing that to happen. Part of your allowance of this energy dissipating for many of you is that you're understanding the shadow aspects of it. Now this is gonna be different for each of you the way this plays out. So I'll just use myself as an example. I had this really intense love experience. And it was quite painful the way that it ended, there was trauma involved. But what allowed me to release it was understanding that that person was my shadow. 
part of the reason why I had such a hard time releasing this love, this energy that hurt me so badly was because I was scared of releasing a part of me that I had identified with that person. This one's going deep, Cancer, okay? I heard you asked for it, <laughs> okay? So I didn't realize any of this until much later that that person, well, he was my shadow. He was all the parts of me that I didn't allow myself to be. All the parts of me that I had been forced to repress or didn't want to look at. You know, the parts of me that said, I could never ever manipulate anyone. I'm just such a compassionate person, <laughs> you know? And there he was, manipulative as all hell, right? <laughs> right in my face. And calling me manipulative at the same time. And I was cancer, or at least I had the capacity to. I was certainly manipulating myself. And him as my shadow showed me this. And letting him go was very painful because I felt subconsciously, and now I realize this more consciously, that if I had let him go, I would let go of that shadow aspect that he showed me of myself. This is going to be like a big transformation for you because if you can recognize yourself in the person who hurt you you can begin to really let it just be what it is and not have to observe and find everything out This message is definitely for me as well as Cancer Venus. But Cancer, it is such a difficult process, a difficult feeling, and it's hard to come to terms with to realize that that person who was hurting you was showing you something about yourself that you didn't want to come to terms with or you weren't allowed to. You know, he was manipulative and the way he manipulated allowed him to get what he wanted from me. And I, in my life, had a hard time getting what I wanted in other ways, in my job and whatever. I had a hard time getting what I wanted because I didn't want to upset anyone. I didn't want to step on anyone's toes because I put everybody's needs ahead of my own. That was cruel. That was cruel to myself. Because somewhere along the line in my life, someone had taught me that in order to be loved, I have to give so much of myself and never ask for anything in return and never take action. And there he was, this person right in front of me, calling it all out. And I didn't want to see any of it. But in the healing process, I sure did. And once I realized that cancer, that this person was giving me, was gifting me knowledge about my inner self, that's when I really was able to release. Because a part of me really... Well, not just a part. That's not fair, I guess. I can honestly say, despite what went on, you know, on a spiritual soul level, I love him for that. I love him for showing me all of those things about myself and for making me stronger. And I'm sure I played a role on his end. And whether he sees the lesson I was teaching him, whatever that is, you know, that's not for me to necessarily figure out either. Whether he figures that out is up to him and not me. But this is where you're at, Cancer. And that's probably the most personal I've ever gotten in a reading. So 
Maybe it's just time to be honest, to open up, to release, to let it go. Wow. Let's get into it, Cancer. <laughs> Four of feathers here. Four of swords. It's time to rest. It's time to heal. Cancer. Queen of Swords at the bottom. Time to be real, truthful, and honest with yourself. Ten of Swords, the Devil, Eight of Wands, and the Queen of Swords. This is confirming exactly what I just said. This painful situation, job, you know, maybe a people at work treating you like shit. Who knows what the case is here, right? Take it as it resonates. But it's like this painful situation really allowed you to see the shadow aspect of others of the world okay taking off rose colored glasses for sure but also the way that you see yourself seeing yourself in your shadow elements is what allows you to heal you have to come out of those shadow elements but you have to go there too you know and look how much energy and power and force they gave you these shadow aspects that this person or this situation showed you they gave you knowledge was it painful hell yeah it was painful ten of swords nobody's denying that was it cruel hell yeah it was cruel you know and it's not a matter here cancer we're not talking about whether this was fair or not fair whether you deserved it or you didn't deserve it it's beyond those questions now and that's the good that's the good news it's beyond those questions now the question is how are you going to transform that energy how are you going to release it how are you going to let it go what's it going to turn into here because look at this energy as you let it go where is it going right to the queen of swords if i can get these cards right. right to the queen of swords boom truth i see things clearly i see that the shadow has taught me something about who i am the truth of who i am and i love this queen of swords she's like my drop the mic queen of swords <laughs> look at her she's like boom i got it i understand thank you for showing me and maybe you're not at the part of giving thanks and loving that spiritual contract as of yet or maybe you'll never get there that's okay this everyone's on their own journey but i'm telling you that whatever shit happened in the past that was super duper painful and cruel has given you a lot of wisdom to speak clearly to think clearly to see yourself clearly to know who you are in relation to this energy And this, look at this, Ten of Cups with the Ace of Pentacles, the High Priestess. This is the power, Cancer. This is the power to know who you are, to know the light and the dark. Look at these pillars, the light and the dark, the underworld and the beautiful world in the light, we could say. You know it both, both in the world at large, how that operates. You've seen it. You've seen it in another, but now you know where you stand in relation to that energy. And once you understand that and you see that and you don't have any illusions of who you are or what you've been repressing or who told you that you couldn't be this way, who told you you couldn't go after what you wanted? You know? Who told you you had to put up with somebody else being manipulative and cruel? Well, your shadow was screaming in the background. Hey, Cancer, we need to stick up for ourselves here. We need to get things going. So we're going to put ourselves into this relationship for this extended period of time so that we can really see what it is that we need to do here. 
And once we learn that lesson, once we know these mysteries that a lot of people never really get to, a lot of people don't want to go to the dark. They don't want to explore their shadow side because it sucks. (laughs) It sucks. It's painful. And then you get to a certain point where it's not, it's interesting. It's not like feeling sorry for that person. It's not totally forgiving the other person. It's just seeing them as you. And that is difficult. That's like really psychologically tough to see somebody who harmed you as a part of you. I mean, we're all connected. But when you're that intimate with someone on that level, to the, to the degree that they hurt you to this extent, that they push you to transformation, that they show you your shadow self by literally standing in front of you and showing it to you. I mean, that's tough, but it gives you a lot of power. And look what comes in afterwards because there's nothing hiding anymore in the shadows. Once you know the shadow, then there's nothing hiding there. You have a clean slate. You can go forward with happiness and joy in a partnership, new opportunities in life, tangible things coming in. You can accept those. Somebody's holding out their hand. Here, Cancer, I want you to have this. And you say, yes, I want this. I will receive this. And I receive it with nothing hiding in my shadow. No fear that I'm not good enough, that I don't deserve love, that nobody's gonna recognize me, that they're gonna take advantage of me. No, no, no. I'll be able to recognize that real quick when it comes my way because now that person or that situation from the past has showed me where those same qualities that all humans are capable of lie within me, dormant or not. And I can call upon them should I need to confront an energy who is trying to oppress me, trying to harm me. This is the gift. Once you see this toxic ass, horrible person, whatever, you know, say what you want about them. I don't care, right? Cool. Whatever, however you want to characterize this person. This is the gift they gave you. the force of your truth. They've reconnected you to something that you have been repressing. Some side of you that is powerful. It was hidden in the shadows, but it is of light. You are stronger. You're more powerful. You're able to handle things from the outside world. Your ego isn't as sensitive. And that's really the karma for this person who thought they were putting you out in the cold here. No, no, they were bringing you into the light. They don't know it, they didn't know it, but now you know it. Let's see. What's going on, Cancer? Wow, right in the middle of Nine of Pentacles. Look at you stepping into your power here. Abundance, independence, material wealth. And I'm seeing this bird as your shadow, you know? It's like now you're friends. And when that bird needs to fly to take off to do your work, it will. It will. You can't heal others without healing yourself. You can't teach others how to heal without going through that process yourself. And I don't care what anybody says. Healing from trauma, which we've been talking about with you, Cancer, on my channel for a while. So I know a lot of you have been through it. Requires going into the shadow. It just does. You can't cover it up with love and light. 
I mean, you want to transform the energy into love and light, and you are. But there's a difference between covering something up, bypassing that, and transforming it. And it's not easy. It was never going to be easy, Cancer. Anything that felt like an easy fix was just a fix for your ego. The spirit did the hard work or is doing the hard work. Your concern is Ace of Cups. <laughs> will you love again? Yes. <laughs> yes, you will, Cancer. I'm going to pull out some of these cards here to clarify. Timeless. Love belongs to you. You are love. You have a timeless connection here to the energy of love. Tell me more about the timeless <laughs> rebirth. This was always meant to happen this way, Cancer, and that's not to put any blame on you or anything like, you know, don't get, don't spiral out with this. Stay, stay in the, in the energy of transformation and rebirth. I don't know, that's what I heard. Yes, you will find love. Yes, you are having a rebirth. And the time on healing is really timeless. Okay, this process of shadow work, of going through the shadows, of looking within the self and looking at that other person or that situation and seeing the ugly, seeing the good. You know, a lot of the times people have a difficult time healing. And this is just some people, you know, not everyone, because they want to see that person as wholly evil or wholly bad and disregard the other aspects of the soul that they initially connected to. You know, to say, oh, it's all a lie. There's nothing there. It's just a boogeyman. You know, and it's not to say there isn't a time and a place for that. But there's a part of your spirit that is trying to get you to, to, to see something else, to see you in them. And so if you see that other person is wholly evil or, you know, not a real person or whatever the case is then you're still denying that part in yourself. You're calling that part of yourself evil, that shadow aspect of yourself evil. When I met this person that I was talking about, I was stuck, like stuck, stuck in my life. And he, by any means necessary, didn't give a shit about anybody else's feelings. Okay, and the way he acted would do what he needed to do to make himself feel better. I, on the other hand, would not do that. I allowed myself to stay stuck so that everybody else around me would feel better. My shadow was repressing that. My shadow was, you know, t working, doing that to my detriment. You know, it's like, I guess, I don't know really what the dark empath really means. But maybe that's kind of what that is, right? It's like being so compassionate, open, and empathetic to everyone else to the point where you're self-sabotaging or manipulating others. Like, I was always there for you. I gave you everything. And the person's like, okay, you decided to do that. I don't owe you anything because you gave me all of this. And the shadow side is saying, but yeah, you do owe me. And that's a shadow aspect. That's your ego wanting like a return on your investment. Anyways, the healing process can seem timeless. The rebirth process can be seem timeless because we haven't allowed ourselves to see that person as part of our shadow. And it really requires time and space away from the initial events of the trauma. It does, okay, and this is why that healing takes so long. But it's almost like you pull that person apart from the energy it was holding. You call that back as your own and you transform it inside of yourself so that that shadow 
element that that person was walking around being super torturous and manipulative, you've now transformed it for the universe by recognizing it as part of yourself or something that you needed to address within yourself. You do that, you transform it, you send those energies out, transmute it, and then it lifts like the whole energy to love and light. <laughs> I hope this makes sense, Cancer. This is super deep, but we're going here because it's time. Current energy is the Seven of Wands. Defensive? Yeah, a lot of what I'm saying is not um, going to resonate with everyone. And it doesn't have to. You were fighting your shadow. You were fighting your shadow. Or you are. Warning, right, secret. There's something, a secret you have about yourself, something that happened in the past that is keeping you feeling defensive. And it's as, if, it's as if your encounter with this person was your spirit warning you. About the path you're on and whether it's right for you. Let's keep going. Hope and support. Five of Cups. Well, this is you spending time in that energy, spending time in that pain, allowing it to wash over you, finding others who resonate with you, who have been through the same thing, who are on the same path as you who aren't scared to explore this whole shadow thing. Perspective of the past. See, this is you understanding that this was a whole turn of events for the best, for your development, for your ascension, for you to really understand what light is for you to understand the balance between light and dark and how that doesn't really mean good and bad. Present actions, while well, you're working on yourself and I love to see that cancer. It starts with you and it ripples outward. You have to address your own pain. You have to address your own problems. You cannot be out here in the streets talking to people about what they need to do, what they should do, what this person's feeling, without doing it yourself. Projection, projection, projection. I see it all the time. And we're all guilty of it. Of course, I project too. I try to do it consciously though. I try to consciously know when I'm projecting and then to use that project projection for good. That's, see, that's the shadow working in the light. It's not to stop the projection necessarily and say, oh, I'm projecting my shit onto you. It's like, okay, well, I'm projecting now, but how can this projection be of use to this person and to me? How can I use this projection to reveal their own? That's shadow work. That's being risky. <laughs> but it's being honest. It's being honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see people's projections all over the place, right? You can see it. I know you can, Cancer. You talk to someone, you fight with someone, you watch someone on YouTube, and you're like, wow, what's going on in your life that you're presenting yourself in this way, you know? <laughs> you can see it. And you're that too at times. You can be that too. So all you need to know 
is that to be in charge of that and to use that as a power, you just have to be conscious of it. I know my story is heavily involved in here and I know I'm projecting that energy out here. But I'm doing it so that those who resonate with me and my experience can find some validation in what they're feeling. When you think of that, the word projection, it's like energy shooting out. And a projection is only powerful if the person on the receiving end accepts it without powerful in a negative aspect, I guess. They accept it without realizing that it is a projection. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen people go off on all sorts of things, you know, that there's all these people out to get them and so on and so forth. And they project that onto other people. Oh, you're out to get me. You're out to get me. You're out to get me. It's like, no, you're out to get yourself. Okay. And you're looking for other people to project those feelings onto because you can't deal with them yourself. You know, that's the, that negative, like not wanting to look at the dark there. Seven of Cups, projection. <laughs> this is your desired outcome. To know when things are a projection. To know when those projections can be helpful and when they can be damaging. And to know how to protect yourself from them. To not accept something. Something's triggering you, upsetting you. You're receiving it on some level. It's hitting something inside of you. Something that you don't want to deal with. Something that really pisses you off. I mean, think about it. Why would just some... I'm going to use YouTube for example. Why would just some stranger get like so vitriolic and, and upset about another stranger talking. <laughs> like, because it's triggered something. Something they don't want to look at. You know, and I'm not saying I'm immune to it either. I get triggered too. But you really know when you're in your power when you say, ah, okay, that doesn't resonate with me or that's not my journey or interesting perspective. I don't think I share that, but okay. Or maybe that is helping someone, but that's just not for me at this time. That's power. That's knowing where you're at on your journey. And damn, that feels good when things don't affect you like that. And so the more people you come across who are like triggering you, triggering you, or like, and you know, just setting you off in different ways, that's an indication that you, there's a lot more work to be done. People get into fights with people, you know, in comment sections, going back and forth. I mean, that's just, if it's done, if it's done in a, a debate way where there's an actual exchange of ideas and knowledge for the betterment of both parties, that's completely different. But if it's just like antagonistic because somebody is taking something personally or they're just criticizing for whatever reason to put someone down or they're being condescending or whatever the case, that's when you know that person has some work to do. And there's nothing wrong with having work to do, but you have to know when not to take it in as your own and when to take it in as your own. When to say, huh, that person, when they said that, that really bothered me. You know, and my knee-jerk reaction was to say this, this, and that, or, you know, react in this way, why? Let's stop for a second. Well, why did, like that comment was so benign. Why did it like really get to me? What is it in there? What, is there a kernel of truth that I don't want to look at here? Or is there something I'm doing maybe that they pointed out that I don't quite like? Or like, what, what is going on here? Is it the way that they, that person maybe is just able to say what they don't like about something and I'm not? Like I hold myself back 
these are just examples, by the way. <laughs> I hold myself back from saying, hey, I don't like what you said. And that's not being truthful to myself. But that person can go around saying, hey, that was shit, that was shit, that was shit. And that triggers me because I want to do that. You know, and these are the questions that as you ascend, as you develop spiritually, you begin to ask. And you ask yourself them with kindness. And that's what your desired outcome is. Let's really take a look at all these things that are in the shadows that seem like an illusion here. What you need to know, Ten of Wands. Well, you've been carrying this weight for a while here. You've been building a wall. You haven't been seen clearly. What's this wall? Why? What is this? Survival. Dreams meant to be there's something that you really want bravery there's some dream of yours that you really really want okay maybe you're not consciously aware of it maybe you are there's some synchronicity some symbol some message that keeps coming back to you maybe in your dreams or in your waking life that is telling you cancer this thing for you this path this is what it's meant to be but you know, you're going to have to be brave here. You're going to have to be brave and know that you will, you will survive if you go after your dreams. And not only will you survive, but that's how you'll survive. It is by dropping the weight of fear, by dropping the weight of other people's crap, Okay, by building that wall to try to protect yourself. It's like drop that, go forward, be brave, because that is how you're gonna survive. By following in your dreams, by making your dreams actual, what is it that you wanna do right now? What steps can you take to bring your dreams into reality? Well, the first thing you need to do to be a successful human being and spiritual being is be honest with yourself about your negative and your positive aspects, about your character traits, about your history, about the people you attract, about why you do the shitty things you do, why you do the good things you do. You have to get real honest with yourself. Take accountability for your role in things. And that's what I see you're doing. And not everyone can do this. It's going to take many souls, lifetimes. Yeah, the world, lifetimes. <laughs> Look at this, the King of Swords, Page of Swords, the Star, to really heal, to get honest with themselves of who they are, how they operate with others, what their role is. Do I sometimes wish that I could be this like super <laughs> love and light person that is just like, you know, I don't know, doing, not that I don't do these things, and I don't know, like <laughs> doing meditations and it has this nice soothing guiding voice and it's like brings a lot of like light energy. Yeah, I wish I could be that kind of healer all the time and I benefit from that quite a lot like I love those people because they really give me they balance me but my role is to help people look at the shadow first or when they feel stuck and does that mean I have a lot of fans no <laughs> no because a lot of people don't want to do that but like you, Cancer, I am realizing, and you are too, that the only fan you need is yourself to know that you are walking in your true path and that you will help those who resonate with you and those who connect to you. Everyone's guided to someone for a purpose, for a reason. 
You were guided to this shitty situation with this person for a reason. You're guided here for a reason. Trust that. Okay. Advice, the Knight of Wands, go. <laughs> okay, enough, <laughs> enough of this. <laughs> You've done all this heavy duty stuff. Maybe we just need to explain it a little bit more, really flesh it out here for you. But now it's time to go. Now it's time to get that wand energy going, to get on your horse and to go see the world, to go live your life. Drop those 10 wands and go forward. Let's see here. Friends, <laughs> find your soul tribe. It's here. Say goodbye to friends who do not fit in your soul tribe. We're all seeds of light. All of us. Some people don't want to recognize that. Other people's are, people are okay with that. Some people really want to be seen as seeds of light. <laughs> and some people don't really care how other people see them. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. The truth is, you're a seed of light. In this situation, that crappy person who you do not need to ever speak to again, they showed you something. They were a seed of light in the darkness. Now that's gonna be difficult to come to terms with. But once you do, I promise you, Cancer, you're not gonna find yourself back there. You're not gonna find yourself involved with this kind of energy again. I love that. Okay. Outcome if all of this advice is followed. <laughs> the emperor. Well, you're in charge of your life. You rule, you rule the domain of your spiritual body, I heard. Your spiritual body, your spiritual life. This is another point I want to bring up. We're embodied beings. Okay, yeah, we have souls. Some of us believe those souls transcend the body. Others have different interesting ideas. Regardless, our experience right now is that we have a body. We're embodied. And if you've been through trauma, which I feel like if you're still here is probably a good, there's a good chance you have. You felt that in your body. And a lot of the times trauma hides in the body. It stays in the body. What happens during a traumatic event is, you know, sometimes our mind can't process what's actually happening either to our body, okay, something traumatic happening to our body, our loss of agency in some way, usually our loss of autonomy. We can't mentally process that. It could even be emotionally. It doesn't have to be like physical trauma, but it could be emotional trauma. Our logical brain cannot come to terms with what's happening. And in order to protect itself, sanity, you know, it splits. It splits from the body. It splits from the emotions. It splits from the pain so that you can continue operating as a functional person in the world to the best of your ability. And then all that trauma gets stuck in the unconscious or subconscious. It gets stuck in the body. It comes up as anxiety and you don't know what's happening. You're just anxious out of nowhere. And that's the trauma that hasn't been resolved. And your brain is not able to make that connection or has a hard time making the connection that, oh, I'm feeling this way because there's trauma still in my body or something's triggered that, a smell has triggered that. And my brain hasn't really made that connection yet. So a lot of trauma work is about unifying the right and the left brain, the body and the mind. You know, the soul sits at the center, but it's about unifying that, those aspects, so that you can resolve the feelings, so that you can understand them, so that you can release them. and become back in charge 
or become in charge maybe for the first time. Maybe you've never felt fully like you ruled your own body or your own mind. And now with all this difficult work, this is what you're going to do. You're going to become your own ruler here. I love you, Cancer. Thank you for opening this space. Okay. Let's get a card to close out. Well, let's get one from your spirit guides. And, 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 and. We'll get one from here. No, 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 mm, 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 no. Well, I'm gonna get in trouble if I don't, okay? So let's, let's get one from this healing deck. What do you wanna tell Cancer since you really want him to come out here? Spirit, what do you wanna say? Phoenix rising. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll trust you. <laughs> 32, which is a five. It's change. It's transformation. You're rising from the ashes. You know, in the death card, we have two, we have the death card out here. I was going to say we have death twice, but we don't. Interesting. The death card here, which is Scorpio, which is the Phoenix. And that's what you're doing. Out of the ashes comes light. Damn, Cancer. Open mind, replace the old cycle with a new and exciting one. Yeah, all of this stuff that I'm talking about really requires an open mind. Doesn't mean you have to agree with it all, but it is food for thought, right? It's something to explore. Should we get one more? Cancer. Live in the moment, what you're looking for is within you. Union of love. Embrace the beloved within your heart. Yeah, I feel like this is transforming out of that energy of the past, living in the now, finding that self-love, finding that truth within yourself, that love exists within you, love for all aspects of you, your ability to heal, you know, some of the shadow stuff that went on in your life that was conditioned into you. Okay, I should say, maybe I should have said this earlier, but well, a lot, I'll say that, a lot of our shadow qualities are things that have been conditioned into us, okay? Some of them are ancestral and generational kind of trauma, okay, that was carried in in our DNA as we were birthed onto earth, into this realm, but a good portion of it was things that happened to us, created shadow aspects. Okay, so it's not like you were born as some kind of shadowy being, okay? It's not like that. Hmm. I heard that's another rabbit hole. Okay, we won't go there. <laughs> Self-love, what did I say? <laughs> now is the time to love, mature, and, or mature. Ooh, it says nurture, but maybe mature is part of it. Now is the time to love, nurture, and heal yourself. Self-love is not simply a state of mind about feeling good. It's a state of appreciation for yourself that grows and matures from actions you take to support your body, mind, and soul. Memories. Your memories are like diamonds in the treasure chest of your spirit. More and more memories are arising within you. Remember the happier moments with your loved ones who are here in the spirit world, for neither time nor distance can stop the energy of love that you have for one another. Spirit loves you. Spirit is guiding you. Always. Always. Be proud. It's time to celebrate all that you've achieved, all that you are, and all that you've become. Every once in a while, it's important to stop and acknowledge what you've achieved and to be proud. Be proud, Cancer. I love you so much. You do inspire my passion. I'll see you next time.